Let's talk about a full wave rectifier. There are two types of full wave rectifier. You can either use a center tap transformer or a bridge one, which is consists of four diodes. So this one we're going to be talking about center tap rectifier. In the next video, maybe we'll do the bridge. And the reason it's called center tap is because we use actually a center tap transformer. When you have a transformer like this, but this transformer, this actually, there's a device in the middle here that's attached to the ground here. And what it does, it makes this voltage and this voltage equal value, cuts them in half. So let me put a diode with this one. I, we'll, we'll use ideal diode for this example, an ideal diode here. And we have a resistor right there. That's your resistor, the load resistor, R sub L. And we're looking for V out right here, based on whatever V in is. So if, if you have V in here, a sine wave coming in, First, let's talk about this one. In the previous video, we talked about ideal transformer. That's what this one is. Usually, you're given a ratio here of N1 to N2. And the voltage here and the voltage here, if we call this V1, and I call this whole voltage here V2, the ratio of V1 to V2 is equal to N1 to N2 as long as my dots are in the same polarity, meaning the dot is positive here and the dot is positive here. If I flip one of these, this will be a negative here. So by adjusting the number of turns, we can actually make this a step up transformer. We can make it a step down transformer. What does that mean, step up? If you take a transformer like this, And we call this again V1, and this is V2. And let's say I do one to two here. Notice the number of turn on this end is twice the number of turn on that one. That is a step up transformer, why? Because V1 to V2 is equal the ratio of N1 to N2. If you cross multiply here, it says V2 equals two times V1. Notice the voltage here, it's twice what this voltage, that's why it's called step-up transformer. On the other hand, if you make the number of turn in the primary one larger than the secondary one, we have a step-down. So if you do this here, and let's say we do 5 to 2, for example. I don't know why the number 2 is my lucky number today. So here, we can say the ratio of V1 to V2, again, notice the polarity, both positive, it's equal to N1 to N2. So V1 to V2 is equal, what's N1 here? 5 to 2, cross multiply, 2V1 equals 5V2, and V2 equals 0.4V1 if you divide by 5. 2 over 5 is 0.4. So notice the voltage here now is much less than the voltage right here, and that's known as step-down transformer. Now, going back to the center tap rectifier here, so if this voltage here, for example, if we use a ratio of 1 to 2, maybe I'll use that ratio here for this example. Let's use 1 to 2 ratio here and show you what will happen. Ideal diode, again, I'm assuming ideal for now. I can change them later to non-ideal. But for now, it makes life easy. 
And again, you have an AC source here with the value of, I don't know, V max cosine WT, whatever you want it to be. Since this is in parallel with this, the voltage here, we'll call it V1, is the same as this one. So V1 here Let's make, uh, we'll call this 1 to 2. So here, this voltage V1 is going to be whatever the maximum voltage times cosine W2. Exactly the same as right here. It doesn't matter what you have here. So for example, if you are living in the USA, again, we use roughly 120 volts between 105 to 125. So V max might be 120 volts. And since W here is equal to 2 pi F, and in the USA, the frequency is 60. So that number is cosine 377T. That's V1, or Vn, which is the same as the source, the Vn, coming in from the source. And I meant to say 1 to 20, not 1 to 20 here, which we could, but 1 to 20 is plenty. So if we have a 1 to 20 transformer here, that means the voltage here from, let's label this point, point A, and this is point B. The voltage VAB is what? Since that's a step-up transformer, the ratio of V1 to VAB is going to equal N1 to N2. So here, N1 is equal to 1, N2 is equal to 2. So VAB is going to be twice times VN. So since this is center tap transformer, if we call this point C here, then the voltage between A and C, because it has to divide equally between them, is going to be 1 V input. And the voltage between C and B is going to be 1 Vn, the same as Vn. So let's watch them and see what will happen. When your sine wave in the positive side portion of a cycle there, so let's look at the positive portion of that sine wave, that Vn. Vn looks like this. It's a sine wave. So let's talk about this portion alone. Let's label this diode D1 and this diode D2. And if we assume that ideal diode, that means the voltage across them, all you need is a hair over zero volt for the current to go in that direction. The same thing right here. So when Vn is positive, let's look at that end here. What's happening here? This voltage here, I'm going to show you A and C. I'm going to stretch it more. This is the ground. This is C here. And instead of drawing that resistor right here, I could leave it there. Some people might take the resistor and put it right here. I'm going to leave it right here for now. And this is my V out, it's defined that way. So when this is positive, this is actually positive. This is equal to this voltage. So you have this one, positive voltage here. You also have a positive voltage here. This end is attached to ground, so this is zero voltage. So we know this voltage at A is going to be larger than zero. What is that going to do for me? It's going to force this one to be on, and current's going to go through it in that direction. 
Let's see what happens after that. Well, let's study the, this bottom one here. This is also going to be a plus to minus that voltage here. So if this is ground, then this has to be below that. Remember, this end has to be higher than this. That's why the plus there. So this voltage here is going to be, it's a minus, is going to be less than zero, which means this one is off. So that's going to react like an open circuit. So for the plus cycle here, this actually is going to be a short circuit if it's ideal. And the current's only going to go on the top part of it, in this one. So nothing's going to come down this way. So if this is Vn here, well, guess what? That Vn is, is in parallel with this, attached between this end, which is the same end as this, and the ground. So these two are in parallel. That means V out equals Vn. If you don't like what I did here, what you could do is instead of putting that resistor here, let's put it right there between this point and the ground. Because notice where it's attached. Attached to this point and attached to ground. So if you attach it to ground, this actually will look like this. This is the diode that's on, that's the short circuit if it's ideal. Yep, that's my resistor. This is my ground. And this is R sub L. And notice V out has to be plus to minus this way. If I do KVL here, Kirchhoff voltage law. Again, you can assign minus to plus as minus or plus, it does not change anything. That will be negative V in, because it's minus to plus, plus V out is equal to zero, which tells you V out equals V in. So if you have an ideal transformer, I mean an ideal diode, not a transformer. We have an ideal transformer here too. But if you have an ideal diode, then V in will be the same as V out, or V out will be the same as V in. So for the positive cycle, here's my sine wave. This is V in. V out here. For the positive cycle, I'm going to make it in red. It's going to go like this. And it will reach the same maximum height. And now, let's look and see what happens when actually the sine wave goes to negative. Well, when the sine wave goes to negative, this value is going to be negative. So let's draw that circuit again. Let's look at the negative side of it. And I'll come back and put that piece in. So this is going to be minus positive. We're talking about the negative portion of that sine wave when we write here. So this is going to be negative here. And this is going to be negative to positive. And I'm going to put that resistor, instead of dangling right there, put it right here. And I want to know what is the current going through this direction again, the same direction as before. Well, this one will be off. This one will be on. Why? Because if this is ground, this voltage is going to be negative. Negative that you need a zero here for the current to go through it. When this is negative, this is going to be positive. Current will go through this and will come back this way. So this will be off and this will be on, so current's going to flow in this direction. Again, this is V in here. This is V in. 
And if we do a KVL right here, minus 2 plus, that's a negative V in, plus V out is equal to 0, and V out will equal V in. But notice the direction of V out in the same direction as before. So remember earlier, we said when you have the plus cycle, for the plus cycle, this is V in, and this is V out. For the plus cycle, V in will go like this. But happen, what happens when you hit the negative cycle? Then V out will be, you flip that. It will look like that. Then it repeats itself. The next one comes in, then the next one. And that's why we call this a full wave rectifier. It keeps flipping the signal. So there's always current going through it. Now, why are we interested in full wave rectifier? Well, a couple of reasons. We use actually full wave rectifier to convert an AC to a DC, an AC signal to a DC. Because now if you're trying to find out what is the average value, what maximum value, gives me the same area as before, the average value. What is that number equal to? Since for half wave rectifier, for half wave it was V average equals, it was V max divided by pi, which is really down there, because if you remember for half wave, this way your output looks like, then it goes to a zero, up to here. So for this one now, it's two of them. So the V average for this, which is the DC value, it's twice V max divided by pi. So that's why the height of this is much higher where for half rectifier is gonna be down there. Small value. But when you have four rectifier, now you have a large DC value. Now the other question becomes, well, if you're going to charge this, is this going to be, are you going to destroy this one? If it's off, remember, if there's a large voltage in the reverse direction, you can destroy that diode there. So let's look at that voltage and see what happens to it. Let's take a case and calculate the inverse voltage. So let's look at that circuit alone here. That's my resistor, R sub L. Again, I'm assuming ideal diode. I'll fix it in a second here. That's first assumption. And this diode here is going to be reverse mode, so it's going to be open. But the question is, we'll call this voltage across the diode, VD. So we're looking for the peak inverse voltage, PIV, which stands for peak inverse voltage. When this one in the forward mode, this is going to work as a short circuit. This diode, if it's ideal again, is going to react like a, a wire. So let's put a wire there. And this is Vn. We'll say this is when it's positive. And this is also Vn. So if you do KVL here, this is V out. So KVL says negative Vn plus V out is equal to zero, which means V out equals Vn. My question now, what will happen here 
if I put a reverse voltage. Is that reverse voltage here, we'll call it VD1. I don't know, VD doesn't sound good, so VD1. VD1 here, what is that voltage there? Is it large enough to break this? Is it 50 volts, 60 volts, how big is it? So let's calculate that, let's do KVL right here. Negative VN minus V out plus VD1 is equal to zero, which means VD1 equals VN plus V out. But wait a minute, what is V out equal to? V out is VN, so VD1 is going to be twice V out there. I mean twice VN, which is the same as V out, but twice VN. So the voltage cross that diode is actually twice whatever Vn. So if you make this voltage, for example, 30 volts here and 30 here, we got a problem. We got a 60 volts right here now across this diode, and that will destroy that diode. So that's really what a full wave rectifier is. This one using center tap, again, we can use any value. What happens if actually this diode is not ideal? That's the only thing we didn't touch on. It requires 0.7 volts to go through it. Well, minor changes to the equation. So if this diode is not ideal, because we're making the assumption it's zero voltage across that. Well, if it's silicon, it's going to take about 0.7 volts. So now put a 0.7 volt here. This is R sub L plus minus V out. And we'll calculate both of these. This is diode one again. We're talking about the positive cycle of it. So when we are on the plus side, it's going to be the same thing for the negative two, identical. So we said this, if we do a one to two ratio, this voltage here will be Vn. When we're talking about the plus cycle, the same as that one. But now if you go with KVL right here, so what you're going to find out that V out here, or let's do a plus to minus, that's a minus V out plus Vn minus 0.7 is equal to zero. I mean, plus 0.7. Plus to minus, I'm using plus. Minus to plus, I'm using. Well, it looks like I changed my mind here. I'll stick with the convention I normally use. Plus to minus, I use positive. Minus to plus, I'm going to use negative. I'm trying to get myself confused here. Plus to minus is positive. So if you move these two out there, you have V out equals what? Vn minus the 0.7. And when we go on the negative cycle, we'll do the same thing. And what is the reverse voltage here? Let's see what the reverse voltage here. Well, let's do KVL here again. Now go this direction. Plus to minus, I'm going to use positive. VD1 minus VN minus V out is equal to zero. So VD1 equals VN plus V out. And since V out equals that number, twice VN minus the 0.7 volts. I'm interested actually in this equation here. For a full wave rectifier, if this is not ideal, this is what's going to happen. This is the sine wave coming in. If this is an ideal, uh, ideal diode here, your output's going to look like this.
But what about if it's not ideal, like this one? 0.7 volts. Where's the 0.7? The 0.7 is somewhere here. So what's going to happen here, actually, let's find out these where these values are. My graph is going to look like this. It's zero here. Zero back to zero, because you need 0.7 cross it. Back to zero. Back to zero. And if this has a peak value of Vm here, V maximum, this will not reach V maximum. It will be V maximum minus 0.7. your graph will look like this and now actually this if we do that is going to lower the V average the V average for a full wave rectifier we said it's two times V max well it's not going to be two times V max because now we need to subtract from it that 0.7 so it's going to be 2 times V max minus 0.7 divided by pi and that's the DC value that we're going to get out of that at your sine wave next video we're going to show you how you can actually create a full wave rectifier using a bridge there instead of transformer and again you could use step up transformer you could use step down transformer it will not change anything in the positive cycle we're going to go in this direction current will go through it that way in the negative cycle it will come down this way some people actually draw this a little bit different one more time actually before I leave this video because I drew it three times three different ways I just want you to see all three of them this is the source that's the VN. So you might see the circuit looking like this. That's the ground here. That's not a diode here. As I said before, some people take that resistor and put it there. So you might see the circuit looking like this. And this is V out here. So V out would be like this. And I also seen people do it a little bit different, one more drawing there. I've seen people draw this and instead of having a ground here and a ground there, some people don't like that. They come down this way, center tap, jump over this and connect these guys together. That's still the same thing. All these are full rectifier, every one of them. Same exact circuit, just looks different. See you in the next video.